The people that you work with on that, on that tour, I mean, Nick Fisher and Gaslight, were they experienced in doing big shows? I mean, had they worked with on arena concerts and stuff like that? Like that or were you all kind of in it together creating something? No, I think they had a certain amount of experience. I, 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 I don't really know what. I mean, they were recommended to me. I think Beggars Bank who put me in touch with them. Um, not sure how Beggars knew them. Uh, and, I, and I don't know exactly what experience they'd had before when it comes to putting on these big shows, but they seem to have no problem doing it. And I certainly had a, you know, every time we would meet, I had a, you know, reams of papers of little drawings and sketches that wanted to do this, that, and, and they would then go off and find a way of making it. You know, most of it was custom built for those tours and never used again, um, which isn't the best way of going about it, you know, if you want, if you want to actually want to make some money. <laughs> yeah. So every one of them cost an absolute fortune and, and then it was it was put into storage and then ultimately trashed and, and dumped. So, I, you know, they, um, they did really well out of it, I think. So you would, so you'd have drawings when you're talking about you want it, the light going forward, but it needs to be diffused and they would come up with a design or, or show you a model of how it Well, I would be. say I want it to be, you know, this wide, that high, be white or different colours. I want it to look like bars, but not actually be bars. I want it to be able to shine forward, and but it's got to be hung because it's going to be this high, so it mustn't be too heavy. Blah blah blah. And then they will actually go off and draw it, and you know, so there'd be a hole there for the plug to go in and wires coming from there to there. They say I did all that technical side. I'll tell them what I wanted, yeah. and they would figure out how to make it. And so, did you see bits of it before? you actually got to the final st stage set, or was it literally, it went from being on the plans and, and they talk about the technical details? I think I saw a panel in, the, one panel in the factory. Stuff. Right. Yeah, I think I saw a panel stood up in the side and it, it lit up and did its thing, but I didn't right. actually see it all set up until the first time I went to, was it Roxy Theatre actually? Oh, I can't remember what it was. Um, but the first time I actually went into that theatre, uh, and I went in the main door, I went into, I came up the back where the seats were and just looked down onto the stage and there it was. And when I first saw it, it was already lit up. It was actually right. running as I walked in and it made a huge impression. <laughs> it, just, it just looked huge, absolutely yeah. vast. And it was so bright and spectacular. And it, cause this is before moving lights. You didn't have all the lights that can do. You know, lighting nowadays is just phenomenal. It's always been my favorite part of it, actually. The lighting, I love lighting. Mm. Um, in those days, if you wanted anything different, you had to, you had to make it because all you had was your normal little par cans hanging down and strobes, and that was it really, and mirror ball. Yeah. So we made some... I, did, I didn't go on that tour, unfortunately, but so someone said that a lot of the time the audience was sitting down, is that...? Yeah, it's always seated, yeah. <laughs> it's quite weird to get your head round. But there, it's weird but... it, in, in a way. Oh, you remember, though, that they were all... they are all kids, so as soon as, yeah. it, as soon as it started, and it, everyone, everyone stood up, and then you'd have the people going around with torches. It's, it's so, so old-fashioned now. Thinking about it, I just don't it get does that seem anymore. Like a long time ago. But it, it, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the same sort of music as now. So yeah, it's quite a different vibe, really. And it was real pop star mm. stuff. You know, so girls would be screaming and all that sort of thing, which is great. You know, but very, very different sort of thing. So people would stand up in there where they were sitting. And then, um, yes, yeah, or not? Actually, just just stand still and watch. But it it was um, it, it was it was very pop star syndrome type stuff, you know. And from that first, when was the moment where you looked out and you started seeing people throwing shapes? And was it right from the start you could see yeah, people? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you, people say, dressing up like you. Like, yeah, yeah. People standing not, there, not moving. Staring back. Yeah, they'd <laughs> take a particular pose from a photograph, you know, whatever it might be. <laughs> and uh, and just stand there like that all night, there. just stand there. And I wouldn't smile and uh, and sort of live in, live in the image out yeah, in the audience. And it got, it was round about, um, I think just after Berserker when I noticed people starting to mix images together, maybe on Berserker. People started mixing images together, and that was a bit—that was a bit weird. But the whole image lookalike thing 
and and stand alike thing I guess that that was there pretty much from from the very beginning people turning up with with the suits on or um, the black obviously was quite a big one the replicas look and sort of white hair there's quite a lot of that going on so you you're on this um, first tour and you got a massive a massive success do you think it was a bit of an adjustment for Paul Gardner at this point having been um, in a band together almost like as this little gang yeah to suddenly be part of this huge business. Yeah, I didn't think about it at the time, to be honest. Um, I was sort of too wrapped up in what was going on, I suppose, but I sort of um, found out later that it, it, he, he was having some problems with it, because it had always been, it was me and him. Whatever band that we'd been in up until it took off, um, it was me and him were like the closest to, and then it was me and him and whoever else was in it. Yeah. Really, so we'd always been really close. We used to go out a lot because um, you know it was always me and Paul, for example, that would be driving in and out of London past Hammersmith Odeon. When we used to sort of we had like this ritual saying, you know, one day yeah. when we drive past it, and um, I, I didn't really think too much about how how he was dealing with it because everything just seemed great and mm-hmm. and vibey. But apparently he was, um, you know, as the other people come in, you know, Chris and. Chris and uh, Cedric and all that lot, it, um, he, it, it all changed. It changed for him a little bit. Not, not in a massively bad way, I don't think, but what it had been, um, what was, was gone, mm-hmm. gone really. Is it true he, he didn't like heights as well? He didn't like climbing up the towers, is that? Yeah, no, not, 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 not good with that. <laughs> no, I'm like that now, anyway. Uh, no, because there's, um, it wasn't that tall though, I think it was in Telecon oh, at was one it? point. Okay. He had to get, get up and stand up on top of the tower. Right. Um, know, what, 12 feet, it wasn't even that high, you know. And he, <laughs> I wasn't good at that. You couldn't get up it, you know. You, just, you, you had to get at this ramp and uh, you used to have to run up it to get up. <laughs> it was funny, it was sort of ungainly bloke. Was the uh, was the tequila incident on this tour when you went overseas? Yeah, pleasure went touring principal tour. Yeah, that was uh, where was that? Australia, I think. Yeah, the first yeah first gig of the Australian tour. It's quite important. Yeah, everyone's there and all the press are there and you know the hostility brewing around the corner when he drinks. Like, God, I don't know how much, but vast amounts of tequila, and. Um, and that's the same, like he had the deep, the deep heat on his legs. And uh, yeah, he had, a, had a, his legs were aching, so he put deep heat on his legs. And then uh, just drank shitloads of tequila. And then and it all kind of hit him around about the, the, the intro tape finished. <laughs> and, uh, just, just, all, it, all, all he could do was just like hit his guitar with his hands and just run to the front. I think where his lead caught him and pinged him back again. He crashed into his uh, stack. And um, <laughs> the last scene being dragged off stage, he cries off, my legs are on fire. <laughs> yeah. it, it, was, uh, it was funny. Actually, that's the same tour. That I, I, he had a go at Chris and Russell about, um, about the fact that they were in it. And, oh, right. Yeah, he got really sort of... Um, I'd forgotten that. Yeah, he got he got a really bit because he was a bit drunk. He he started getting a bit a bit angry. You know that they they weren't real members. They weren't there at the beginning. Right. Was, I'd forgotten that actually. Right. It's probably yeah. yeah that all makes sense now. It's obviously just lurking. You know. Yeah. So how was it in on that um, sort of far east Australia? Because New Zealand was a bit weird, wasn't it? That was not when you got there. There was sort of um, well, I nearly got beaten up. When we'd only been there an hour or so, come out of the airport and dropped the bags off, went to this club that people had told us about, and um, and they all kicked off there, and we got chased out by skinheads and legging up the street. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of us, me, me, crew, I mean, there's a lot of us there, but there was a lot more of them. Bloody hell. That was a bit scary. Um, Cedric got... Cedric and Chris nearly got into a fight in the, the hotel bar before we even left because right. they had some problem with Cedric because they thought it looked like he might be black or something. Yeah, so that kicked off. Um, God, it's just weird, really weird place. And then um, I think the first gig, there was people turned up outside that said I was anti-Christian and, mm. and, and my lyrics were all... 
against God. Funny, and... they'd seen into the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maybe they did. Uh, and then what else happened? First gig, somebody set off a fire alarm and it cut all the power. And um, it was it was just... And then one of the one of the journalists started having a go at me because I, I hadn't bought every single part of the show. I, I'd left some of it behind. Right. And... Um, she said, you know, what, was I being fair to the New Zealand fans that I hadn't bought everything? And I'm going, yeah, for God's sake, you know. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a bit, bit of a pain, actually, the first, well, the, in fact, the only New Zealand tour I've ever done is, it was, um, I get quite a few little glitchy things happened that made it not as much fun as it could have been or should have been. But I think we're going back there next year. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. apparently. Because uh, a good because the Australian thing went so well, there's a good chance we're going back and including New Zealand. So that'd be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what the skinhead situation is now. If they remember me. Because Australia was good the first time round, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 uh, it's quite big time. It's good. It's enjoyable. So and and tracking back a bit in in Europe. I mean, I, I've I've read that you in Germany things were going really well, and then. Um, you sort of made the connection that when you're actually performing and you're dressed in black, there seemed to be a bit of a strange reaction to it. Well, not a strange reaction to it, but a reaction to it. Was that... Do you remember that, or was that...? Um... I, 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 yeah, no, I do remember. But I, my, my memory of it is, is more that I, I suddenly being... I started to get criticised for, for doing um, Hitler salutes. On stage, and, and and then they started to say that I was trying to do the whole Aryan thing because yeah. you know, I had the well, I don't know if I had blonde hair on stage at that time, but certainly on the covers, you know, the whole black um, uh, uniform type look with the white hair and the whole Aryan look, and of course on stage a lot, I'm, I do do that mm -hmm. a lot, you know, I still still do, and they said that I was trying to sort of it was like um I had this little Hitler thing going, and I. Just, I and that was in the German press, was it? Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, well, it, definitely in the German press, and I think the, the press here picked up on it, but it was definitely in the German thing. And it made me really self-conscious all of a sudden, and I, I didn't know what to do with my arms, and mm -hmm. I got really really embarrassed about it, because I, 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 there was nothing like that going on at all. You know, I, I've made no such connections whatsoever. And uh, just, just it, it, it made the whole thing really uncomfortable for a little bit, and I didn't quite know what to do about it. Didn't know what to say about it without, you know, such a habit of saying the wrong thing anyway, and talking myself into trouble rather than out of it. I, I, I didn't know how to deal with it at all. But it just went away, actually. It just sort of faded away. Because mm. obviously, I mean, I think it surprises um, people sometimes because they always assume that you're massive in Germany, don't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure it's like Gary, he must be massive in Germany. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> well, I suppose it's it's partly because the whole Berlin thing and the look, I mean the the black clothes and the black leather and all that, and also because a lot of electronic stuff's come out of Germany, obviously craft work and stuff like that. And bands like Depeche Mode have become massive in Germany. Yeah. Kind of in that sort of gothy black vibe, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's me then. So, did you go back to Germany? That was good for a while. I mean, when it when it was all massive here, it was it was it was good there as well. Mm. In, that, in that first year, it was just pretty much good everywhere. You know, a, a very few places that where it wasn't doing you know, really well or spectacularly well. It was it was. It was really good. It really just did seem to strike a chord with everyone. Uh, and a little bit surprising in, the, in you know, a lot of the countries are like non-English speaking countries mm -hmm. as well, that, but it, it really did seem to be working. And in Japan? Yeah, Japan was brilliant. Japan was great. We went to Japan on the way through to Australia and it was, um, it was you know, massive. We were doing really big places and selling them out. They're, they're weird because they, again, it's probably different now, but, but they, they, they clap really quickly, so that then because there's a silence because they like to listen to you talking. Right. Because I don't say anything. <laughs> so they go. <laughs> and <laughs> we're trying to get come on. You know, this really embarrassing twenty mm. second gaps. So. But uh, it was good. That's. I, I think that was. Um, I, I had a little break in in in, in the Philippines and then right. I got like presented with a gold record, 
and I didn't even know I, I had a record out of there. And it's kind of like that, you know, wherever you went, mm. even some of these more, what seemed obscure places at the time, um, you know, yeah, I had gold albums and gold records and places that I, I didn't even know I had a deal in. So it was mental, brilliantly mental. <laughs>